Hello, welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to talk to you about another important viral family, which is called Coronaviride. And then I'm going to talk to you about another important matter, which is the diagnostic laboratory methods, uh, the most common ones at least. So, Coronaviride family is made of a very large number of viruses of different kind and uh, among these viruses there are about five viruses that are able to infect human beings also but the other ones uh, only infect other kinds of animals. These viruses are made of a single RNA strand as a genome with a positive polarity. They are about 80 to 100 nanometers big. Then they of course they have some uh, antigens on the surface uh, which are able to hemagglutinate and to uh, make the virus be able to uh, bind on the cell surface so uh, they have like hemagglutinin and uh, fusion proteins basically these viruses usually cause uh, colds or intestinal infections but the most part of them especially two of them which are really dangerous cause respiratory syndromes I'm sure you, you've already heard about them. Uh, their names, they are called SARS, which is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and MERS, which is Middle East Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. SARS uh, was found out in 2003 in China. Uh, it passed to human beings through uh, a specific animal that I think that you can only find in China, Vietnam, in the Middle East, uh, in Asia, which is called weasel. Uh, Chinese people usually eat this animal, so this virus passed to human beings because of the fact that Chinese people eat this animal. How to recognize this disease? Well, the most common symptoms are high fever, cough, hypoxia, uh, dyspnea, for example. Uh, MERS syndrome has almost the same symptoms, so it's difficult to understand whether uh, we, are talking, we are in front of a SARS disease or a MERS disease. MERS disease was found out in 2012 and um, the virus was passed to human beings through camels, essentially. Um, unfortunately, there's no efficient therapy against this virus, so we can just do uh, like a supportive therapy. And since the virus is really contagious, the patients have to be, uh, have, to, have to stay inside closed rooms, they have to be isolated and uh, they can be treated with uh, plasma transfusion, plasma which derive, derived from um, recovering patients, so from people who have already got over this disease. So um, presumably uh, there will be antibodies in their, in their plasma and these antibodies could be really helpful mm, to uh, how to say to stimulate to active the immune system of the patient but let's change the subject for a while I want to I would like to tell you something about the, dia the most common diagnostic laboratory tests you have to know that there are Mm, there are many tests, but we can gather them in two different groups. 
the, fir the first group is, um, the, uh, is made of the indirect tests uh, called serological tests and the other one is made of direct tests called vi viral, viral tests. So which is the difference? The difference is that the serological tests uh, aim at finding the antibodies against specific viruses while the direct, the viral tests aim at finding, at directly finding the viruses inside the body of the patients. So, which are the most common indirect tests? ELISA, indirect ELISA test, Western blot and the immunoradiometric assay. Uh, ELISA, indirect ELISA, for example, consists on putting on a uh, a sort of uh, plate, big plate, the primary antibodies that recognize specific viral antigens. Then we put the patient's plasma on this plate and if the patient is, in, is infected by a specific virus, he would, have, he would have in his plasma, he would have the, the, the viral antigens. So these viral antigens would bind the primary antibodies. Then we add the secondary antibodies that recognize the viral antigens. These secondary antibodies are bound with fluorescence or radioactive molecules or they also can be bound with specific enzymes uh, that metabolize uh, chromogen substrates and then we analyze the uh, fluorescence with a spectrophotometer. And what about Western blot? Western blot is always used, often used after uh, indirect ELISA test because indirect ELISA test gives a lot of false positive results. So Western blot is um, important for deleting these false positive results. So Western blot is more specific than ELISA and direct ELISA test. With this technique, we usually uh, divide, separate the proteins, the viral antigens that the patient has in his blood flow and we separate them with a electrophoretic field. Then we transfer the viral antigen on a membrane by an electroblocking technique. Then we put the primary antibodies on it and the secondary antibodies on it. The secondary antibodies bind the primary antibodies. And again, these secondary antibodies are bound with uh, fluorescence or uh, fluorescence molecule or a specific enzymes that recognize chromogen substrates again. Among the, the viral tests we have PCR, RT-PCR or the viral isolation or for example the hybridization techniques like the northern blot for uh, when we are talking about RNA uh, genomes, southern blot for DNA and dot blot. In the immunoradiometric assay instead we use a reaction mixture where we put the viral antigens, the patient's antibodies and other primary antibodies that always recognize the viral antigens. These primary antibodies that we add are always bound with uh, fluorescence molecules. So there would be a competition in between the primary antibodies that we add and the patient's antibodies. So we will observe as much fluorescence as many antibodies the patient has. So that's all for now. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye!